All right, back to our creature design and the body. So I just uh, rough cut the hips from this wolf. I'm trying to get the spinal angle of my sketch. The wolverine's front uh, chest is good, but it needs to kind of tilt back and lead into hips back here. So here are the wolf's hips. Now I'm going to hit Command T. And I'm going to play not with warp, because warp can, can start to make things a little bit too macaroni-ish when it's a lot of complexity. And what I want to do is use distort. And I'm going to kind of tilt that perspective angle a little bit with distort. And then I can go to warp. And I want to line up this shoulder with this shoulder just by tugging it forward. And you can see that immediately gives me the sense of like a belly and a spine that's angling up, even though that fur is a little counter to what I would expect, right? I have enough overlap to make that work. Now I can hit return and then transform it again. And this time maybe just use free transform and hold down shift to squeeze it a little bit tighter and then position it. So proportions work in lots of different ways. Then I can use warp and get this foot in place. And though I have like deer legs I can use, if I can get these hips to work, that makes my job easier. if I tilt them in and up like that. And the only thing I don't love about it is where this leg is placed. It feels a little wide for the skinniness of my creature. But that might be fixed with some internal compositing. We will see. Or maybe I do want a different back leg. But that, those hips are helpful. Okay. And for the sake of time, this can, this can work pretty well. So what I can do is erase away from my Wolverine with that soft 100% opaque eraser and kind of get rid of the hard edge transitions into the elbow joints. Remember, we don't want crisp cutouts in these internal edges. Okay, now we can see if we have some back leg reference that is helpful. So I have this all organized in my assignment two folder under my references. And I have the deer legs. And let's see the back legs that are maybe most helpful. I think are probably these. I'm going to drag this on. Ah, but they're at kind of the wrong angle. So this is it's tricky. And so we're kind of deciding what kind of compromises to make. But I think I might be able to use this. So I'm going to rough cut it. Especially this kind of bending down of the spine I like. Rough cut it. Might as well keep the tail in there. Keep the legs in there even though those are going to change. And then duplicate. Get rid of the smart layer that it came from. And start transforming it to fit behind. So I have those wolf legs. Those look pretty believable. Except I don't like how far that leg is. So let's turn that off for now and see what combining these two would do.
It's all about making the anatomy match. So that definitely moves up the hips. But if I use distort, can I get those proportions to work? I'm in trouble with this. Let's see. I can use warp, just like we did with our emojis and our vector shapes. Same kind of tools here. So that would be kind of how that would work. And I don't like how blurry that, well, no, not that bad. It's just not nearly as sharp as the Wolverine, but it could be useful. So big difference. And what works better for the silhouette? Maybe I'll steal the tail from this, but I like this better as a silhouette. So let's just isolate the tail. It's a rough cut out of that. Duplicate it, get rid of the stuff I'm not using. And now let's fix that leg issue. So this is how internal compositing can also work. I can steal this leg and this foot, which I plan to replace the paws on. Maybe I'll just replace them on the front foot. Duplicate it. Make sure you're on the right layer. And now I have a new leg to play with, and I can play with its positioning. In relation to everything else. I think that works. In fact, I might go back. I might have been a little too quick to delete from this layer. So I can just keep it there for the tail. But that could be helpful in the internal compositing of the leg. I'll show you what I mean. Oops. I'm going to lasso that leg from the wolf feet layer. Not just move it, but duplicate it. Command J. So he's going to have an extra leg for a little bit. But move it to where I think fits the anatomy of my sketch. Even transform it a little. Make it wider at the top. A little narrower at the bottom so it feels further away in the view. There we go. And that's closer to matching my character's proportions. And now I can erase away from the wolf layer. there to reveal this tail just roughly and then also I can maybe use a little bit of this line for the spine see that orange to kind of create the spinal ridge I need okay now, get rid of the uh, unsightly leg. I'm just going to rough erase it out. And then get rid of some of this extra distracting stuff. Just roughly. Not going for a clean cutout. The reason I'm using a tablet is so I can go thick to thin with my 100% soft erasing. Then on my new leg layer, or erase away from that. Cool. 
Now, next class, as long as we have a lot of this kind of rough placement together, we're going to learn how to even out the lighting and the color and even use things like clone stamp to help transition one into the other. Because I like the light feet and the dark fur and the orange tail. You know, maybe I can keep a lot of those elements. Again, there's a lot of layer organization that's important. Knowing what you're looking at, what you're affecting with, what you select is important. Okay, so now I'm going to select all those, put them into a new group, call that group the body. And move that group, maybe make sure auto select is turned off, down onto my sketch. And it's not the cool crouching position. But let's see what happens when I put the head on that. Let's move the head above the body. And now let's scale down the whole head. So once I have the whole group selected, I can do Command T, and then I can transform the entire head to kind of match the proportions. This always happens when I demo. I have more plans that I'm able to execute, but now I'm going to take the head and the body, move that on top of my sketch. It fits the intentions and the proportions, if not the exact pose, but the silhouette is still pretty clear. And I wanted to get more coral and, and weird shapes for the mane for this transition instead of this white fur. And I wanted different claws, and we'll see if I get to that. But these are the different uh, materials I found for some sort of mane, especially this yellow fern was pretty interesting. Show you some of these. Got yellow mushrooms. I think this has some, some good potential, and this. So bring that on. It's always nice when you can find an element that already has a white background. That makes it super easy to just cut out. All I'm going to do is use my magic wand, turn off contiguous, select all the whites at a 32 standard tolerance, and then go to select inverse, and then hit command J. That will automatically rasterize it and get rid of the background. I might have little debris, but that's pretty darn clean. Now I'm going to fit that between the head and the body. And you can see how flora and fauna can help to transition things. And now I'm going to play with transforming it. Try flipping it around some different ways. That looks like a pretty good angle on it. Its color is like nauseating. Weird 70s color plant. But that can easily be adjusted with direct adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away, because I know I don't want this pot, Just going to use my lasso with the one pixel feather. And this isn't a fine cutout yet, but it's getting rid of this pot element. Hit delete. 